stereotypes, colorful language, excessive violence, poor spelling. Who wrote this? It's time for the Ozone Radio Show, because it's a crazy world out there. Watch this, and you'll know why Johnny can't read. With us tonight, Claude, Tom, Jojo, Mike, Mark, Denise. We'll be right back, but we're not leaving. time for the story of Big Bunny the Bunny. One fine sunny day, Big Bunny was walking down the happy magic trail. But oh no! Big Bunny's fancy new wristwatch is all broken and didn't work. Dear me, said Big Bunny, maybe my friend the cobbler can help me. So Big Bunny went to the cobbler shop. I'm sorry, Big Bunny, said the cobbler. I can only fix shoes. Then the cobbler started to laugh and get bigger and bigger. And then he burned his own arm with a smoky cigarette. Hiss, hiss, went the cigarette on the cobbler's knotty forearm. So Big Bunny left the cobbler shop and went into town. When he got there, he saw a tall building with a clock on it and thought, surely they can fix my watch there. Big Bunny went inside and found only a nice lady on the phone. Can you help me fix my fancy watch? Asked Big Bunny. I'm afraid I can't help, said the nice lady. I'm called a telemarketer. I've been cursed to remain here for eternity, abusing the phone system and pushing useless products that people will never use forever and ever. Then the telemarketer pierced Big Bunny's left nipple and gave him a big orange carrot. Big Bunny got so mad, he stomped his foot. Hmm, I'm sure thirsty after all that walking, thought Big Bunny. I think I'll go to the bar. So Big Bunny sat down between his two friendly friends and won a basket full of money from some happy magic pull tabs. Hmm, thought Big Bunny. I'll just go and buy a brand new fancier watch. So Big Bunny went to the giant mega mall. But it was all closed down and empty because of the bad SNL crisis. Big Bunny was so mad, he stomped and stomped and stomped again. The end. Nice home, isn't it? Probably a lot like your own, but it does have a few problems. It's got comedians. Hey, you know how I know my dinner's ready? The smoke alarm goes off. <laughs> hey, I know you're out there. I can hear you brushing your teeth. Exterminex is the area's number one comedian control service. Our qualified servicemen use the most proven techniques which are safe for your home and family. From the common expulsive complainer, Is this my car? you guys, but I look at a donut right to my hip. <laughs> to the self-assured hyperactive. <laughs> Keep the tip. <laughs> so for controlling comedic pests in your home, call the experts. Call Exterminex at 555-0000. Hello. 
this is Dr. Sphincter, and this is Austin, Minnesota, and it, the date is May 18th, marking the 100th anniversary of the Hormel Corporation created in 1891 by George A. Hormel and an associate using some old packing uh, equipment they had bought from a defunct packing house. Well, over these past hundred years, the company has grown remarkably, and today we're uh, specially celebrating the food product spam. There's spam um, products being sold and spam contests of several kinds, including a sculpture and eating contest. They have one thing in mind today, and that is finishing their spam, their seven-out serving of spam, in the fastest possible time. The time to beat now is one minute, 18 seconds. Oh, and here's a good one. This is the best one so far. Doesn't appear to um, represent any particular tank. Uh, maybe the, it does not look like the M1 Abrams or Sherman, but it is a, a tank nonetheless made out of the quality meat product Spam for Operation Desert Spam. You know, there is a story about George Hormel, who is who is known for his penny wiseness and his and his frugality. Uh, he was in the plant one day, and there was a piece of meat on the floor. And he walked up to the workers, and he took a dollar bill out of his uh, wallet and tore it up and threw it on the floor. And he said, "This is the same thing that you do that if you throw meat on the floor." Behind me is the main Hormel uh, factory facility. Uh, each day, workers uh, stream in through the, the massive parking lots and the, which surround the, the huge and massive factory buildings. The factory workers are wearing a greenish, yellowish smocks with hats with face shields to protect their faces from the splatter. The Hormel Girls. Well, it's been another wonderful celebration of the Hormel Corporation 100th year this May 18th, 1991. Commemorating May 18th, 1891, when George A. Hormel opened his first packing plant on the shores of the, uh, the Cedar River. And someday, we will return to this wonderful place. We will return to this wonderful place of Austin, Minnesota and the Hormel Corporation. Thank you. This is all about cheese. Today is Colby Day. In general, when making any cheese, the casein in milk coagulates and the water is separated away. Then it is cheese. Colby was created in America in a special process in which the whey is drained off and cold water is added. Colby is often manufactured in Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio, and Indiana. Colby does not keep as well as, say, cheddar, but ripens faster because of increased moisture content. It really does. When Colby gets hard and old and tough, it tastes bad and not even a cat will eat it. Also, by federal definition, Colby is required to not have more than 40% moisture and not less than 50% fat in the dry matter. A common defect in Colby cheese is sourness. Sourness occurs when there's too much acid in the vat. Another common problem of Colby cheese is discolorization or mottled cheese. Colby cheese should be yellow.
When your face says 911, don't let it drag you down. RAR with Dermadrill. Rip it at the root. With Dermadrill's patented process, your zit is removed at the root, then scientifically disinfected with ZX12, found only in Dermadrill. So get back on your feet and into the swim of things. Rip it at the root. This is my husband, Steve. Just about the nicest guy in the whole world. He's not entirely perfect, though. You see, he comes from a rough family. But around our neighborhood, he's everybody's favorite. My Steve. He's a hitman. But I don't mind, because it's murder out there. Session, they just line up. Honey, what's today's date? Well, let's see. It's Thursday the 14th. Thursday the 14th, huh? Of what month? November. It's November. Honey, how could I have forgotten our eighth wedding anniversary? Nine. That's what I meant. Nice. Steve, is that all you can say? You care more about work than you care about me. Oh, my God, honey. How can you ever forgive me? You know I do everything for you. Ooh! Pardon me. Sorry, Steve Michelli. It's okay, Harlan. We weren't doing anything. Ho, 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 ho. Anything? Looks to me like you were doing plenty of something. What is it, Harlan? Well, uh, Steve, I came over for uh, some advice. Got a hot date tonight. You know, I'm a real party animal. I got a date with a French number. Ooh, la la. But uh, the boyfriend's the jealous type. You know what I mean? Thought you might be able to help me out. Well, I'll tell you, Harlan, I don't think so. You see, I'm a florist. <laughs> But Steve, I thought you were a doctor. Uh, he's a doctor and a florist. Didn't I ever tell you, Harlan, that I'm a tree surgeon? Yeah, that's right. Well, that's very interesting, Steve. Yes, it is, Harlan. Goodbye, Harlan. <laughs> oh, honey. Let me take you out to dinner tonight. I have a job across town at 8, but we'll eat in that neighborhood, and I'll just slip quietly out during the hors d'oeuvres. Well, as long as you slip back with a nice, expensive gift. Honey, I've killed hundreds, but none of them compare to you. Well, 
I tell you, Sam, I had no idea the accounts are in such horrible shape. I mean, I mean the retirement fund and and the Christmas fund. Well, I just didn't know. You know, I just. Uh, could you come back and clean the pool later, pal? Yeah, Hello, Victor. Nice to see you. May I come in? Uh, you're already in. Get the hell off my property, will you, pal? I mean, you know, kind of. But I just got here. What do you want? It's not what I want, Victor. It's what my client wants. Uh, who are you? Steve Johnson. I know we haven't met, but, uh, well, I'm here to terminate you with extreme prejudice. <laughs> That's a little shop talk. You're kidding, right? No, I'm not kidding. And call the cops, will you? Relax, Victor. Sam's the one that took out the contract. <laughs> Just a little something for my portfolio. <laughs> Relax, Victor. I'm a professional. Sold over 10 million albums in 46 countries. More than the Beatles, Elvis, or the Bee Gees combined. Who is he? He's Chaz Dick, and this is his latest double album set, Hard Drive. Yes, Chaz Dick, who's worked with today's hottest stars. Madonna, Prince, Sinead O'Connor, Janet Jackson, and many more. Here he's put all his greatest drum machine hits together for you. Like Sequence 69. Sequence 152. Sequence 99. Sequence 187. Sequence 629. And sequence 2000. Yes, that's Chaz Dick's hard drive. Available on a DDD, CD, or LP. Call 1 800 CHC DICK. Visa American Express or MasterCard accepted. That's 1 800 CHC DICK. Call now and let Chaz Dick rock you all night long. They're a group of studio musicians fired from the Muzak factory, terminated to make way for new technology. Broke and humiliated, they grab any gig they can find, playing the only way they know how. And he's an ex-ballistics engineer for the defense industry, one who's dedicated his life to the arms race. Laid off because of the thawing of the Cold War, he's now fulfilling a lifetime dream by leading an easy listening orchestra. And together, they're the Matadors. Touring the region and having fun, making friends and spreading joy all along the way.
My name's Alexander. You could call me Andrew, and today we're watching the Groovy Almanac. <laughs> we're going to talk about issues. <laughs> Lots of issues. All the issues. <laughs> Joining me today on the Groovy Almanac are my esteemed colleagues. There's Mark, Gene, Aaron, and Shaggy. Hey, Shaggy. <laughs> the question I put to my colleagues tonight is, the taxation question concerning the university's relationship to the garbage burner and how the governor and mayor stance to and upon the current restriction of 1 a.m. bar closings, whereas both state congressmen have less than a claim, without even mentioning, obviously, the dome, our new parking ordinance and the half percent state sales tax notwithstanding. And panel, <laughs> please keep each statement brief. <laughs> As we do in England and the whole of the London situation, the problem was, uh, you know, the motel down there, the whole, by that garbage uh, burner. Paul Tax was, uh, don't know the guy. You know, people would just realized that they know couldn't him, and I don't really care who it, he so is. they weren't paying it. So then it got to the situation where they decided the rich and screwing the poor. So, I just don't care. I agree. <laughs> And now we have the responses to last week's Groovy Almanac question. And that question was, how come St. Paul is always all empty and deserted a lot? <laughs> These are just a few of the over nine calls we received. <laughs> I think there's people tunneling into my basement and taking my stuff. I can hear them digging and scratching every night. Yeah, man, the answer is the garbage burners in Minneapolis. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, that brings us to the close of another edition of Groovy Almanac. <laughs> I'm Alexander, and on behalf of all my colleagues and I, I'd like to thank you for joining us today on the Groovy Almanac. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kevin, and I'm Mike, and we're Kevin and Mike's daycare. Why pay 15, 20, even 25 bucks a day on daycare when you can pay just five bucks a head at Kevin and Mike's? Kevin and Mike's fully trained staff are always on hand to instruct your child, or just be a friend. Everything you'll find at the more expensive daycare centers, you'll find at Kevin and Mike's. An audio-visual center, an important teaching tool for kids of any age. Supervised swimming facilities. And fully equipped playground area. Why, at Kevin and Mike's, we even offer child pickup and delivery. So give us a call. We'll take kids big and small. At Mike and Kevin's, it's daycare heaven. Call Kevin and Mike's daycare at 555-KIDS.